Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. So a little while back, I did something that I didn't think I'd have to do for a very long time, and that is I bought a brand new Windows 10 laptop. And it's this one. This is the Dell Inspiron 11, the 3180, and it's basically a netbook. It has an AMD A6 processor, 4 gigs of RAM, and 32 gigs of EMMC storage. And the reason why I got this is primarily for business stuff. It requires Windows. And for me, most of my work, I just need the internet browser and a few of those applications that require Windows. Now, for all the other laptops that I've ever had before this, I bought them used. Pretty much all from pawn shops, like this one right here. I buy it, and then I put Linux on top of it. But in this case, I wanted that new car smell, basically. I wanted a brand new laptop, and I didn't want to spend a ton of money. So that's why I went ahead and got this for about $150. But it didn't really take me long after using it to realize that this was probably definitely not a good idea because I forgot how much resources Windows 10 requires. And basically with this particular laptop right here, especially when I'm using an internet browser like Chrome, after opening up about three tabs, it's pretty much unusable. And I actually even did a rant on how much I hated this particular laptop. And I'll leave that in the description area below if you want to see it. And so because of this mistake, I actually needed a better laptop that will allow me to run the programs that I need within Windows but at the same time I didn't want to break the bank and so what I ended up doing is I bought another Windows 10 laptop but this time it is an HP so this is a slight upgrade above the smaller one it still has an AMD a6 processor but it is a more powerful version it has four gigs of RAM and most importantly one terabyte of hard drive storage now what I'm going to do different here is that I'm actually going to put Linux on top of this and then I'm going to go ahead and run Windows within a virtual machine so that I could run all my Windows based programs that I need. So this is the same thing that I do on my Linux desktop. Now this is something that I definitely could not do on this smaller one. So let's go ahead and get this unboxed and get Linux on it. And for some reason whenever it comes to unboxing that's just a difference between the premium stuff and the basic stuff. I don't know why that is, but okay, there's a setup. Okay, so that's everything there. Um, the model number on this is pretty long, so I'll go ahead and leave that somewhere where you can see it. And then there's a power cord right here. All right, and let's get to the actual laptop itself. There it is. So this is a 15 inch laptop. I think to be exact, it is a 15.4 inch. And there it is. Voila. Not bad at all. Very basic, but you know, I think it looks good, you know, for what it is. And so some other reasons why I bought this laptop is for things that are basically related to all the physical dimensions and also the physical features of this laptop. And so besides the fact that I needed Windows, one thing that I really liked about this Dell Inspiron is the fact that it has a small form factor, which is probably the only advantage that it has. And so this allowed me to easily put this inside my bag because I am outside a lot and I do travel and I don't like to carry around a lot of stuff. So similarly with this new laptop, this is bigger, but it's still small enough to fit inside that bag. And other things that I do like about this is it has ports. First and foremost, it does have an Ethernet cable input, which I absolutely needed. And I really don't like most of the new thin laptops that don't have this. It does have an HDMI out, two USB ports here, and it also has an optical drive as well, which is important for me, and also another USB port. So a lot more flexibility and versatility versus something like an ultra thin laptop. Now, ideally in the future, I would definitely get a gaming laptop, which has a lot of power, but most importantly, all these ports and other features, which would work well for me, but that's gonna be later down the road. So before I begin the process of installing Linux over this Windows 10 machine, I did wanna go over something that's really important, especially if you are considering doing the same thing, and that is, making a backup of your entire Windows 10 operating system and also a recovery disk. Now this is something that is important for a few reasons. First and foremost, I just spent $300 on a Windows 10 machine and so I do have a license to run Windows on this. So I might as well keep that available to me. 
And then secondly, for whatever reason, if you decide that maybe Linux as your main operating system is not right for you and you want to go back to Windows 10 just like you had it when you bought the machine, then you could actually go back and recover from it. Now Windows 10 does have a system image and recovery feature available and so that's exactly what I did. And so I actually copied an image of the entire operating system, the drivers and all the utilities right here on this external drive is about 30 gigs. And then secondly, it also gave me the option to create a recovery disk, which is what I did here. So this will allow you to boot up into recovery and then restore from the image that you have. And also I downloaded the free version of Windows 10 and I put it on this USB stick just in case. And then finally, I downloaded Linux Mint 19 Cinnamon Edition and put it on this USB stick. And this is what we're going to use to install Linux on this Windows 10 machine. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put Linux on top of Windows 10. Now, obviously, things have changed when putting Linux on top of Windows 10 machines, specifically because of UEFI. And so it's not as straightforward as before where you would just go into the BIOS, you know, put in your USB stick, and you're good to go, and you can install Linux Mint. And so let's go ahead and put this here in the USB drive. And I'm going to see if I could do this without messing with any of the UEFI settings. But more than likely, I'm probably going to have to do that anyway. So let's go ahead and restart. So as you can see there, it didn't go into the Linux install, which is what I expected. And so we're actually going to have to mess around with UEFI settings. So typically, you're going to have to go into Windows 10 and go under the recovery settings in order to boot into the UEFI settings. Okay, so what I had to do here in Windows, I'm going to have to go into my recovery settings. So you go here, then you could go to settings. And then here, you could go to update and recovery backup right there. And then here is recovery. And now you could go to advanced startup. So this will allow you to change what boots up. Okay, so this one I want to do, use a device, use a USB drive, which has Linux on it. So here I'm going to choose the EFI USB device. And there it is. Start Linux Mint 19, 64-bit. Let's go ahead and see if that works. So as you can see there, Linux Mint did start up, which is excellent. So I'm going to quickly make sure things are working in general. Let me see the internet is working. I have it connected to my Ethernet cable. Good. So Linux Mint website comes up just fine. Great. And it seems like everything looks okay. So it looks like it will be compatible with this machine. So let's go ahead and install Linux Mint. And hopefully nothing breaks. But if it does, I've already created the necessary recovery and operating system image that I showed you earlier. So let's go ahead and go through the normal Linux install process. And so here, I'm going to completely erase the disk and install Linux Mint. So you definitely want to make sure this is what you want to do. Or you can install alongside Windows, but that's not what I want to do. So once you do this... There's really no turning back once you wipe everything out. And here is the install process for Linux Mint. Very familiar. And hopefully in a few minutes, we will have Linux Mint installed and it should restart. And no more Windows, at least not as your main operating system. Okay, so now the installation is complete. And now is the moment of truth where we can actually restart. And I'm going to remove the USB stick. And hopefully we'll have Linux Mint as the only operating system on this hard drive. So please remove. And there is Linux Mint. Great. Welcome to Linux Mint 19 and say goodbye to Windows 10. Okay, so now that I've successfully installed Linux Mint 19 on this brand new, formerly Windows laptop, I now have a new Linux machine. 
which will give me a lot better experience than I got here. <laughs> and so if you had any thoughts on anything that I did today or whether you had your own experiences installing Linux on a brand new Windows 10 machine, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me and you wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then check out my Go Content Creators Group where you'll get access to 30 videos plus additional content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com. And I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.